NWA Anarchy is one of the best independent professional wrestling promotions in the world and in my opinion does not get enough recognition or respect. So I'm going to review some of their best shows. For those of you who don't know, NWA Anarchy is a professional wrestling organization based in Cornelia, Georgia and tapes most of their shows live and streams them through the internet through their website nwaanarchy.net. Hostile Environment will always be one of my favorite shows because of the venue. NWA Anarchy tapes most of their shows at a small church referred to as the Church of Southern Wrestling in Cornelia, Georgia. The promoter, Jeremy Palmer, was able to raise enough money to host the shows to host the show at the Georgia Mountain Center in Gainesville, Georgia. The Georgia Mountain Center has hosted past wrestling such as WCW and the and the classic NWA. So to see NWA Anarchy hosting in hostile environment here at the Mountain Center made NWA Anarchy seem like a big budgeted promotion in contrast to the normal indie feel of their TV shows. The first match of the night was a singles match between former friends turned rivals enemies Sal Renaro and Todd Sexton. This was an awesome match to start the show. Sal Renaro was the heel and Todd Sexton was the face. Sal Renaro controlled most of the match but Todd Sexton hit a lot of stiff shots and submission holds. Todd Sexton is a technical wrestler like Daniel Bryan from Ring of Honor and WWE and Sal Renaro is a technical wrestler also, but is more uh, of a high flyer. So you saw a, you saw two contra you saw two contrasting styles here. Todd Sexton wins the match when he makes Sal Renaro submit to the figure four leg lock. The next match of the night was a was an eight man tag team match between the Anger Alliance and Sex and Sex and Money and Stephen Walters and Derek Drivers the New Wave. This was another awesome match. Nothing special here. Like I said before, it was an awesome match. You saw lots of um action here. The um Anger Alliance, they were the bad guys and they were big, so they were pretty much the stiff powerhouses and Sex and Money and the New Wave, they were the faces and they were much smaller, so you saw a lot of um high flying martial arts like maneuvers from those guys. Um the um the Anger Alliance defeated, defeated Sex and Money, defeated Sex and Money, and Derek Drivers and Stephen Walters, and Stephen Walters. And after the match, those two teams I just named argued. The next match of the night was the fifth match in the best of five series matches between Patrick Bentley and Slim J. Both wrestlers were faces going into this um, match. This was an awesome back and forth. Um, match. Both guys did a lot of crazy moves. Moves. Not only did you see um contrast, not only did you see a lot of contrasting styles here. You also saw a contrast of characters and gimmicks. Patrick Bentley was some gothic emo wrestler, and Slim J is a wrestler with a um hip hop gimmick. Slim J wins the match with a sunset sunset flip power bomb off the top rope. After the match, Slim J embraces Bentley for, for an awesome five series matches. But um, Bentley, under orders from the mysterious Reverend Dan Wilson, attacks Slim J after the match. The fourth match of the night was a battle for the ownership of NWA Anarchy between Shadow Jackson with Jerry, Pomo with Jerry Palmer, the current promoter, and Nikki Free with Al Getz, the previous promoter of NWA Anarchy, in a dog collar match. This was surprisingly a good match. I'm not a fan of the dog collar match, but this was still a good match. Shadow Jackson wins the match with the 1031, which is basically a sidewalk slam or a spine buster. Thus, Jeremy Palmer gets to keep his company. At the end of the match, Jeremy Palmer beats the crap out of Al Getz, but before he can finish him off, a mysterious woman emerges from the crowd and takes Getz away. The next match of the night was a ladder match between the awesome attraction Hayden Young and Austin Creed. 
the Hollywood Blue Necks, Kyle Matthews and Andrew Alexander, and Seth DeLay and Adrian Hawkins for the NWA Anarchy Tag Team Championships. This was a phenomenal match. Some of the highlights of this match was Hayden Young climbing the top rope, climbing the top, climbing the top of the ladder, and hitting a crossbody off the ladder onto the Hollywood Brunettes, and Seth DeLay hitting a horror Karana on Austin Creed off the ladder. The awesome attraction retains the titles when Hayden Young retrieves, retrieves, climbs the ladder and retrieves the belts. The next match of the night was between Ace Rockwell and Chad Parham for the NWA Anarchy Heavyweight Championship. There really wasn't much wrestling here, but this this was but this was a pretty awesome fight and a damn good one at that. The match ends when Chad Parham strikes an official and gets disqualified. Thus, retaining his championship. Ace Rockwell wins the match, of course, but because titles cannot change hands on a disqualification, Chad Parham retains the title. Ace Rockwell was the face. He's always been a face his whole NWA Anarchy career, and Chad Parham, surprisingly this time, was the heel. He's He was a face in the early days of NWA Anarchy and Wildside. The main event was a War Games match between... The two most evil stables in all of a NWA Anarchy history, the Devil's Rejects, led, led by Reverend Dan Wilson, and the NWA Elite, led by Jeff G. Bailey. This was this was an awesome bloody bloody cage match. The highlights were Jeff G Jeff Lewis of the NWA Elite doing a crossbody off the cage onto the NWA onto the um. Devil's Rejects, the return of the strong style psycho tank, and the ending climax where Phil Shatter choked Iceberg and made him tap out with some wood to win the match and save NWA Anarchy from the Devil Rejects, who in storyline wanted to take over NWA Anarchy. This was an awesome this was an awesome show. I wish I could have been there live when it happened, but I was busy at that time. It just sucks that NWA Anarchy has all of these epic storylines, awesome characters, awesome feuds, awesome matches, but because of their budget and because they're an independent promotion, they will never be recognized. Well, I'm done for now. Doug8798, out.